Hi, good afternoon, everyone, or evening or morning, depending on where you are. Uh, thank you for joining us for this career guidance webinar. My name is Fatima Rodriguez, and I am the communications recru and recruitment coordinator at InterExchange. Today, we will be discussing how to build your online presence and how to leverage your LinkedIn profile during your job search or internship search. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with InterExchange, we are a cultural exchange organization based in New York City, and we assist students and young professionals to engage in programs in the United States and young students and professionals to engage in programs abroad. Now, the career training program specifically works with interns and trainees in the United States to train in skills related to what they have studied or some past professional experiences. So now while there is a pause in people interning overseas, we do wanna make sure that we are still providing you with guidance and resources for when it's time to resume international internships and traineeships again. Now, as you start preparing for your internships, it's really important that you start creating or even cleaning up your online presence. This may include reviewing your current web presence or developing a new one through a personal website or maybe uh, a different online profile. Uh, so this webinar, will we're going to take a look into how you can really harness the power of your online web presence, develop a consistent image, and also how to take advantage of certain specialized networks. Now, in addition to this, another reason why we want to cover this topic is because we do wanna stress that the Department of State will also be looking at your social media platforms during the visa application process. So having a positive online presence is going to be very important for, for this. Now, with that, let's move on into the outline of this session. Now, before I jump right in as well, I wanted to introduce my colleague, uh, Abigail Grazel, who is also on the line. She is the participant, participant services coordinator here at InterExchange, at, uh, at Career Training. And if you have any questions or if you're experiencing any technical difficulties, please type it into the chat box. Um, and in addition to that, I do have some built-in pauses throughout the entire presentation, but if there is something that you would like for me to go over, please don't hesitate again to type it into the chat box and I'll stop and address those questions as they come in. Um, another, another thing I wanted to make sure is that my computer is running smoothly and that you can also see this second slide right here. Um, Abby, are you able to see the second slide? Yes, I can see it. All right, perfect. So with that, let's go into the outline of the session. Now, the first part of this webinar, we're going to talk about how exactly to build your online presence. We'll cover how to create or even, you know, spruce up your online presence as is, um, how to establish your personal brand so that it's, um, it's uniform throughout all your social media networks. And then we're gonna talk about how to monitor your online activities so that you maintain a positive online presence um, throughout all your social media. Now, the second half of the um, webinar, we're gonna talk about how exactly to leverage your LinkedIn profile. We're gonna go into what exactly LinkedIn is, how to use it, how to maximize your first impression, ways to be an active member within your network and how to grow your online network so that essentially you can start applying for internship openings through, through LinkedIn. So first things first, right? You wanna create an online presence. Now, the chances are many of you may have already created accounts on a lot of the social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, LinkedIn. 
Um, but if you haven't, again, the first and easiest step to creating an online presence is to establish accounts on social networking websites that would showcase any of your previous experiences, interests, and your skills. Now, the reason why this is so important is because employers use social media to search for and recruit interns and trainees. A lot of these employers will check your profile as a way to judge your character and even vet your credibility. So no matter how many social networks that you may already have or how much experience that you've had posting on your profiles, you could potentially lose a lot of opportunities if the content you post online is inappropriate. We'll go on a little later in the webinar. Um, we'll talk a little more about how to monitor your online activities so that this doesn't happen to you. And so an effective way to really build your social media presence is by having really meaningful and deliberate posts. And what I mean by this is that you want to use your social media platform to produce and reshare content or posts that you either find really insightful, a little introspective maybe, and that's something that you think would be compelling to your intended audience. Um, and by doing this, you can, by doing so, um, you're really able to engage your 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 audience and show them again your your abilities, your interests. Um, and another way to do so to showcase your work or projects that maybe that you've completed during university is by creating an online portfolio or even writing a blog. Um, this definitely could be helpful for employers to see your skills, and even provide supplemental support to your resume, especially if you know, you're in the area of architecture, design, film, journalism, research, amongst so many other fields. You know, there, are, um, there are an abundance of fields that you can um, display your work by having an online portfolio or even creating a blog. So creating an online presence and even building your online pre um, presence allows you to document and exhibit your work that is really ultimately on your CV and your resume. Um, this is really helpful for you because, you know, the next time someone asks you for a sample of your work, you'll be able to share a link to your online portfolio by either maybe including it on your CV or your resume, or even link um, your online portfolios to other social media platforms. And creating an online portfolio doesn't have to be hard. You know, it can be really simple, and there are a lot of many free websites that you can use to create online portfo portfolios, such as, as we have listed here, Weebly, Wix.com, Behance.net, and even like Dribbble.com. And the way you would want to design your website or your blog is you'd want to have a theme based on your, your personal brand, definitely, of course, include a title, and any other creative content that you want to use. Now, definitely don't forget to include an About Me section on your portfolio that, de de that details your interests and goals. And lastly, Never forget to include a contact me section with your name, email address, and any other professional social media accounts. This just really helps um, for people to contact you. You know, let's say someone like a recruiter just found your portfolio on LinkedIn or any other website. It's just an easier way for them to contact you, reach out to you, and engage with you. You also would another great another great thing to implement onto your online portfolios is to use samples from class projects or even previous work projects that you've that you've completed. You know, it's important to remember that this is essentially your body of work 
So you want to include all of this in your portfolio, you know, and pick and choose, um, you know, use your judgment, pick and choose the ones that you really feel best represents um, your your interests and your professional goals and how exactly you want to display your work. Um, and by creating this kind of like online presence through portfolios and, and blogging platforms, you're, you're able to take advantage of all the audio and visual representation of the research that you've done or the projects that you've worked on and the experience that you've gained. Um, you can even also include photos of yourself at work in your lab, maybe videos that you've created as part of even your film studies. Um, this just allows, allows people to s easily learn more about you and find your work. Now, I do want to make a note that the website, um, your online portfolio, or you know, the blog that you create doesn't necessarily always have to be related to your career focus per se. You can even write a blog about your life experiences or maybe write about other interests outside of your industry field. Uh, for example, for those of you who are in the field of writing or journalism, this can be another great way to showcase your writing. Or for those of you who would like to go to into social media or marketing, this is a great way to display your knowledge and use of other online platforms. So establishing your personal brand. Social media is really all about storytelling. So it's important that you establish your own personal brand that is consistent through your online platforms. So before you begin working on your social media profile, you'll want to create a statement that is unique to your brand. Each social media platform, it, it does include an area to describe yourself. So you'll want to use that section to either highlight your qualifications for a position or again, like highlight any of your, any of your interests. So for example, like your bio on Twitter could read, architecture student at NYU or interested in criminal justice. And there are other sites like LinkedIn that would have sections of your profile that would specifically um, highlight your past employment or have another space to display your brand statement. And I do want to stress that by having a brand statement on LinkedIn, it will definitely increase your visibility and credibility to your employers. And later in this presentation, again, we'll we'll take a look, we'll take a further look on how exactly you can leverage your LinkedIn profile during an internship internship search. Now, I would say that there are typically different advice on how to develop your personal brand. I'm, you know, I'm guessing you're wondering how to as well. And, you know, the golden rule is really to always be authentic. Um, remember, you're telling your story and no one else has your story but, but your own. So you really want to keep um, being true to yourself. And I find that there are three keys to unlocking your personal brand. The first is to talk about your education and the scope of your experience. Here, you'll want to highlight your education or any other training you've received, the years of experience and the scope of your experience. The second is your branding promise, where you wanna express the combination of your skills, your experience, and of course your personality. Um, try and think about what matters to you. What is it that you're really passionate about and what can you offer that you think that other, your other peers cannot? And lastly, you want to highlight your unique strengths. Think about what are your strengths or what is your natural approach to your work or your interests? It's really, really important to remember that your personal, personal brand should reflect your target job. You know, your your brand is really a statement of value that promises how your personal attributes separates you from your peers. 
So here's a quick example of um, uh, um, an Instagram profile and a Twitter profile. As you can see between the two, she um, this in this is actually one of my friends. She's really passionate about travel, fitness, and um, wellness for all. And she really does a really great job across both social media platforms to really captivate that. She also um, includes links to her profile um, made by Kay West, which is a separate Instagram account where she's trying to, you know, um, selling jewelry. But she also includes a link to her um blog so again everything is really tied together and it just really shows her personal brand and explicitly shows like what she is about so just something to keep in mind when you're you know either creating an instagram account or even a twitter account um, i also do want to state how want to remind you all how a lot of inter-exchange interns have actually found internships through Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I've actually uh, interviewed one one student and he told me how he he followed a particular company on on Twitter and he reached out to them a few times and by the time he had an interview with them to get an internship, uh, the host employer was saying, he's like, well, you know, after all the, the, the times you've reached out to us and, you know, you've done such a good job of this interview, I have to accept you now. And it's, again, it's just really engaging with, with host companies through, through the social media platforms, but also um, needing to have that positive online experience so that when they do go onto your profile, they're able to see what your, what your brand is about and what your interests are and your, your professional, um, your professional goals. So once you have a solid online presence, maintaining a positive online reputation is just as important. So to create a really effective and engaging social media presence, it's really, really important to think before you post. People, especially potential employers, care about what you post. And what you say online, even if it's personal, has the potential to impact you professionally. You should never, ever, ever use your online platform as a, some sort of diary, especially if it is negative, inappropriate, or even hurtful to others. Um, it's, it is common and, you know, so many people uh, could post something impulsively or maybe even spontaneously that may or may not have a negative impact on what, what they say um, or how they can be perceived. So before you post something, it's a good way to kind of like monitor, monitor this is to think, would this raise any flags? And putting this into technique will give you an idea of what kinds of things you should share with others and what sh things should be kept in private. Um, additionally, if you do have your own website or Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn profile, it's you should take extra care to make sure that it is perfectly polished and showcases good grammar. Maybe ask your friend or even a university advisor to look over your website or any of your social media profiles for a second opinion. That way they can look over, you know, if there's any spelling mistakes, grammar, if they think, you know, maybe that post is a little bit, um, um, is, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, a little too sensitive. They, you know, it's, it's just nice to have like a second, a second opinion. Uh, and another thing to point out, you know, the reason why you don't want to consistently have bad grammar, let's say like an employer visits your profile, they might think that you're careless and may even be like inattentive to details. So that's just one thing to definitely keep in mind when look uh, monitoring your online activity. Um, another thing to do for your professional image online is to scrub your profile and to really stay on top of the privacy settings for a lot of these online social media platforms. Um, in general, I would definitely say to delete or untag anything that might seem 
unprofessional. This, this could include pictures, posts, um, tweets even. Again, sometimes it might take asking a friend to maybe take down a photo of you if you think that's not a good representation of how you want to be perceived. Um, also, be careful on be careful about who you follow and maybe who you're even friends with. This this can be a reflection of on you and your interests, and sometimes that might not align with what em employers are looking for. So spend sufficient time on each website learning how best to protect yourself from people outside of your immediate circle. Um, sites, you know, they're always changing. Um, definitely with our privacy settings. So check often um, to make sure that when you search for yourself as a recruiter, that you like what you see. You can even maybe make an incognito window, do a quick Google search of your own name or your profiles to see how they come up. And that will give you a good idea of how um, you're being perceived like as from, you know, whether it's a recruiter or a host employer. Um, lastly, remember to keep your profile up to date. Um, make time, you know, every few months to either add or remove certain things from your online profile, um, just because this could prevent misleading information. Um, this could, um, sorry, this could, uh, if you, sorry, if you don't add or remove certain things from your online profile, it may, um, show misleading information about you as a candidate. So this is just a good way to avoid anything that's misleading or any misleading information. Now uh, you can even like, for example, imagine that you haven't updated any of your online profiles for the past few years and then a recruiter from a big name company views your profile, but then all of a sudden decides that you might not have the qualifications needed for that job. But in reality, you actually have the experience, but you just haven't updated your profile. So it's just really important to keep all the information up to date so that you're not losing out on once in a lifetime opportunities. Um, and we're actually going to talk, once we talk more about the LinkedIn profiles, we'll talk about more how to keep your profiles up to date and post relevant information. Now I wanted to stop here um, to pause for any questions to see if there's any questions that have come in. Um, Abby, is there any questions? Yeah, we have three questions. Um, so the first one is, are there certain online portfolio sites that are better for some professions than others? So all the websites that were posted above are great options to use professionally to showcase your online portfolio. Um, however, I would definitely take a look at each of those platforms to see what features would best work for you in how you want to showcase your portfolio to potential employers. Um, it honestly really depends on what kind of design you're trying to display and how you want to display it. So looking further into those um, portfolio sites will definitely give you a, a better understanding of what you think would best work for you but overall all of those sites over there are are better um are, are good professionally great um the next question is how do i balance my privacy settings um versus building my online presence that's a great question and i feel like a lot of people have a hard time doing this because you know you want to maintain a positive online experience um, presence but also have your own personal um, personal things online so I would have to say to a certain extent you can post what you like on your social media website um, if you choose to post whatever you want but you have to be more conscious of what goes on in your profile um, maybe you can um, like for example, Facebook has an option to just share um, uh, amongst a certain circle of friends. On Instagram, you can share a story to only your close friends. Um, these are some ways to kind of maybe um, to manage the privacy settings a little bit more if you want to share things um, a little bit more freely. Um, 
You can also maybe be private on some social media platforms, public on others. There are options to create even two accounts, one personal private account that you and that you just share with your friends and maybe a public account that um, um, is more geared towards your brand and your professional goals. Yeah. Okay, and then the last question is, how do video platforms differ from traditional social, social media platforms? Um, so actually, um, video platforms are quite similar to traditional social media platforms in that you can create a profile um, where you share your content. Um, so your brand can share video and edit its own videos, you know, create playlists of the videos that you've that you've created, and it can even prompt discussions. So, like YouTube and Vimeo are great tools to use if you'd like to showcase videos that you've created with potential host employers. It's just, you know, let's say you're into film or you, um, maybe directing, or and you've you've created you have a whole portfolio of videos that you'd like to showcase. Um, YouTube and Vimeo would be a great place to to do that and then maybe even link it to your personal websites or and whatnot. So there's a lot of similarities there. That was the last question. Awesome. So now that we've talked a little bit about how to build your um, online or how to create your online presence. We're going to talk a more into about LinkedIn and how you can leverage your LinkedIn profile to um, during your internship search. So what is LinkedIn? A lot of you may be already familiar with LinkedIn and how may or how to use it, or maybe you've used LinkedIn but not really sure how to um, really build a complete profile. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that right now. Um, LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network online with 675 million monthly users and there are also 20 million companies listed. So it is a huge network. Um, and compared to other social media networks, LinkedIn carries, you know, a certain level, a certain expectation of professionalism. And this is why a lot of recruiters use LinkedIn to recruit, to find candidates, you know, with 90% of re recruiters regularly using LinkedIn. Um, and LinkedIn is a really great place to start launching your professional brand. Um, it's just a good resources, resource for you to keep up to date with different things that's currently happening in your field. Um, I mean, you can always read books and uh, some news articles, but LinkedIn does a really great job of creating a platform that will allow you to stay ahead of news and exciting things that's going on in your field. You know, LinkedIn is just, it's overall just very current and up to date. Now, this is a quick um, overview of some statistics about how LinkedIn is being used by recruiters. Um, and the reason why, you know, LinkedIn, um, a lot of recruiters go on LinkedIn is because by going on your LinkedIn profile, um, employers and recruiters can get a really quick snapshot of you. And not only is your resume posted, but your LinkedIn profile shows opportunities for engagement with you and also shows how involved you are in your field. They can see your resume, what organization or groups you belong to, who you're connected with in your field, if anyone has recommended you or endorsed your skills. And these are the things that really will make you stand out. In, and those are the things that will make you stand out in your field if you have this all completed in your profile. And we'll take a look into that um, next. But I just want to quickly go over one of these, um, maybe two of these statistics, but it says here, you know, social networks are the number one source of quality hires. So people are really looking at your LinkedIn profile. And, you know, top recruiters are 60% more engaged with LinkedIn recruiting tools than average um, recruiters. So, again, it's important that you're really maximizing your first impression 
and that you are um, have a complete profile to show um, to potential employers. So now that we've talked about how to create different social media um, profiles and how to establish your personal brand, there are some key profile updates on your LinkedIn to keep in mind in order to maximize your first impression. And the reason why um, this is important is because completed profiles rank higher in Google searches. This will um, this gives you the opportunity to control what employers see when they search for you. And it, it also allows you to create a narrative that shows what you can offer them. Um, now, don't forget to set your profile to public because it's really important that these um, employers find you and also to customize to customize your profiles that can easily be conveyed to people when you meet them at um, maybe conferences or even to fit on your resume or CV. And here's just like a quick example. It will be like linkedin.com backslash maybe your first name or your first initial last name, one or two numbers or three numbers, something that's simple and that really gets to the point. Um, secondly, you'll want to upload a professional looking photo. This, um, you know, this is essentially how people are first introduced to you. And it, it's really what governs first impressions from the start. Um, I think, you know, you'll want to choose an image that one is recent and also will take about like 60% of the circle on the LinkedIn profile, just so they can really like see your face. And, you know, be mindful to use a photo that is really warm and inviting, you know, don't forget to smile. Um, you know, you want to you want to be approachable. Additionally, you after you have uploaded a profile photo, it would also be best to add a background photo that either indicates your education focus, professional field or any other interest that you may have. Um, this is a great way to grab people's attention and create some content around who you are. And if you'd like, you can actually create a custom banner on Canva for free. Um, and you know, it's just it's it's just a fun way to create you know a more memorable profile, something that's you know fun and 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 nice to look at. Uh, but once you have updated both photos. Think of what would you like your headline to be? Because you want to create a headline that is more than, you know, just your education. You'll want something that really distinguishes yourself. And this is probably the best place to put your personal brand statement. You know, you can also, you can add, you know, as I said, you know, you want it to be more than your education experience or your job experience. You can even add other projects you're working on or even scholarships that you have obtained in that um, headline. Now, the summary section is your chance to tell your story and to get into more detail about your experience. Um, you don't want to you don't want to just list it to list your skills and experience. And we'll go, I'll show you in the next slide how, you know, your summary and how your headline will, will also look. Um, and, excuse me. So with the summary section, in order to really captivate your, your audience, you want to start with a strong opener so, so that they, your audience can keep reading. Um, this will allow you to talk more about your personal brand, express your goals, some key accomplishments that you have had have done so far, and this everything just really that would reflect your skills and your passion. And lastly, don't forget to update your contact info so that recruiters can reach out to you, you know, if they um, come, come on your profile and, you know, they match um, your your experiences and your your passion and your your brand is what they're looking for, looking for. So here is a quick example of what a um of what a completed profile would look like generally. As you can see, uh, this um, student has added a background photo. You can tell that she's really interested in data analysis, STEM, business intelligence 
with all like with all the computer servers in the background she's added a profile photo of her smiling you know really clear takes up the majority of the the circle she has also created a headline for herself you know she is um she she is she's marketing herself as a driven analyst you know who's obviously interested in mathematics statistics data analysis mining etc and then her her summary she quickly um describes herself as a dedicated professional with comprehensive skills in linear algebra calculus probability etc and then goes on to talk about her accomplishments and her interests and obviously once you update your contact info this will be a clickable link so if a recruiter can easily like contact you and message you and then here just a quick um this is, is a really funny feature for well really fun feature on linkedin is that like once you complete your um linkedin profile more and you've grown your network you have um you'll there's different rankings on linkedin as like first second and what and what and so on so here again this is just like a quick overview of what the first few points of what we talked about so the second part to maximize your first impression is to add relevant work experience the experience section of your profile is is really a place to share what you've done and how well you've done it you'll want to highlight the responsibilities that align with your headline and summary you want and then you also want to list the most experience first even if it's part-time you know if even if it's like a part-time work while while you're in school it's just a good way to show that you know you you are looking to acquire relevant experience um, again share what you've done and how well you've done it you can also include photos video, blog posts, um, PDF or other media on um, of your work into, into each work experience because LinkedIn does allow you to give the options to include those different media formats. It's also a great way to include um, your online portfolio and some of the work experience sections. And don't feel discouraged if you don't have too much work experience because you can also add additional experiences to your profile, such as your volunteer experience, um, education experience, projects or courses that you've taken, um, honors and awards that you have um, achieved, and licenses and certifications that you've obtained. Uh, it's again remember your profile is about showcasing you and your accomplishments and then again tying it back to your summary and your headline so here is the second portion of the um of angelina's profile she shows her she shows her help desk technician it states how long she's been working there for, where where she where she was working, and then briefly briefly provides points about her responsibilities. So again, help desk technician, cybersecurity intern, intern quantitative analysis statistics. These all relate back to what she initially um, um, her personal brand, what she initially has marketed herself as, you know, a driven analyst. Um, so it's really important, again, to really show showcase that your experience relates to your headline and your summary and and what what your professional goals are. And lastly, to maximize your first impression, you also want to list and manage your skills and endorsements. Um, you, you can add, I would, I would suggest to add, add at least 10 skills that best reflect what the skills you're known for, and then delete any skills that don't relate to you and what you do. Um, just because this gives a false representation of you. And in general, you don't want to put any false information on your profile that you don't, that you can't, um, support. And if you're wondering how to get endorsements, um, the best way to get endorsements is to give endorsements. Um, you can, like, for example, you have, you know, your colleagues, someone who you have, um, 
maybe gone to class with, maybe they're really good at public speaking, you can endorse that skill. And then likewise, if you're great at public speaking, your peer or your colleague can also endorse you as well. Um, you're more, they're more likely to endorse you once you, once you start giving endorsements. Um, secondly, you want to also request recommendations. The recommendations goes a little bit further into your skills and endorsements. Um, you can ask your managers, professors, classmates who you've worked with closely for a recommendation because they're more likely to know you very well and how you work and how you um, and how you how you go about tackling certain projects. And this really it, it will illustrate their experience of working with you. And then again, it will give credibility to your strengths and your skills. Here, um, here is an, another profile. It's a great profile to I wanted to show you um, because the skills and endorsements, as you can see, public speaking, event management, and Spanish are her top three skills. And it has been endorsed. 37 times, 34 times, and 23 times. It really just shows, you know, again, like, wow, she's really good at public speaking and event management. And she's really does a good job. Um, she really speaks Spanish really well. Maybe, you know, you're looking, uh, the employer is looking for someone who's bilingual. This is just a great way to kind of um, show that, okay, I can trust this, that, you know, whatever is on her resume is in fact what she says it is. And then additionally, down here on the recommendations, you can see that she's received five recommendations and has also given five recommendations. Um, the, you can all, you'll also be able to view who has given the recommendation, you know, their position and the date at which the position was, um, the recommendation, recommendation was given. And then a quick blurb about, you know, what it was like to work with Is Isabella. So, it's just overall a really good complete packaged profile. So if someone goes on here, she's already vetted for, for her skills, her endorsement, and then her also her recommendations. Now, I also wanted to pause here um, for any other questions before moving forward about talking about how to um, be an active member. Abby, is there any? Yes, um, we have three questions again. Um, so the first one is, how long should my LinkedIn summary be? So in short, there's no real wrong or right answer to how long your LinkedIn summary should be. The summary se section um, allows you to compose uh, about 300 to 350 words. So it's important, but I think it, the key is to remember that you don't want your LinkedIn summary to be dragging to the reader or have any rambling paragraphs with no clear point. So before you begin your summary, try and create an outline of things you want to say and, and the order of it. So the first things first, you want to start with a strong opener. Um, really create an, uh, an opener that hooks your reader to continue reading your summary. Uh, maybe some questions to think about to hook a reader is what, sells, what sets you apart from everyone else? What combination of skills help you achieve results? Why do you love your work? Second, you know, state your mission. Talk about what you do, what's important to you and why. And third, list your experiences and then provide proof of those experiences. Uh, fifth, um, maybe the fifth point is like highlight any interest that you may have. And then lastly, wrap up your summary to provide your contact info. So that's probably the best way to structure your um, summary. Again, don't, don't, don't ramble in your paragraphs. Make sure that you have a clear, clear point to your summary and that it ties into, to your headline. Okay, um, and then the next question is, um, is it good to list a skill even if I don't think it will be endorsed? I would say it is okay to list a skill if it isn't endorsed initially, especially if it relates to your experiences or your professional interests. And if it is in fact a skill that you 
really have. Um, eventually, once you start receiving endorsements from other people or giving endorsements to other people you've worked with, they'll be able to see that skill listed there and then endorse you as opposed to if it wasn't listed there. Um, again, you know, you want to showcase the skills that relate to you. Um, so I wouldn't be worried right away if it's not endorsed. Okay. Um, and then the last question sort of um, goes back to the earlier part of the presentation a bit. Um, but apart from LinkedIn, what are some of the other more popular social media sites in the US? Um, so for example, a student from Europe, um, what social media sites should she use um, that she may not be using already? Or you know, how can she be found most effectively um, by employers in the US? Um, I, that's a great question. I think, honestly, there are the two biggest social media websites aside from, um, aside from LinkedIn. If you want to keep tabs on the company, I would say go on Twitter. There are so many employers and companies who, who, who share information about, about, about their company, what projects they're working on, certain news within that industry. So it's another way to engage with the, with the company. So if you have like a really good um, profile, again, you know, fill out, fill out the about me section, maybe share some tweets related to the industry that you're interested in, um, re like retweet, post some tweets, or even reach out to the potential um, employer. Uh, also, Instagram, as I've mentioned before, a lot of um, a lot of Inter exchange, previous inter exchange interns have found internships by using um, Instagram by following certain companies that they like. Um, so this is just another great way to um, connect with employers and also showcase again your interests and and what you like because um, you can really build your brand and your platform on these websites while also being connected with a lot of these companies. Thanks, Fatima. That was the last question. Awesome. Okay. So moving on. <laughs> Oops. So now that you've, you know, have some tips on how to complete your profile, another important way to leverage your profile is to be an active member within the LinkedIn community. And the reason why is because by sharing your content on your LinkedIn feed, um, you start to have a more active role in your your network as opposed to if you're just you just have a profile and it's just sitting there. And by sharing content, it will add value to the connections that you have. Um, it shows your interest in keeping up to date with trends and current news in your fields of interest. So when you begin to share posts, add some thoughts and comments that you may have about the article that you're sharing. You give yourself more prominence when you really establish your own opinion and express why a particular piece matters to you. It also shows a certain level of thought leadership on your end, so it just it, it become, you become just an even more appealing candidate. Um, and as you can see over here, I just wanted to quickly show you um, on the side. Here's just an example about of one of one of my friends who um, who's in part of my network, who shows you know, who shares a piece that she has um, written and that she experienced while visiting the Equal Justice Initiative Legacy Museum and National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Alabama. Um, while this may not be like directly related to, I mean, I'm sorry, this like is this is directly related to what she does. As you can see, she does legal design and innovation. And then she writes a piece about what the Deep South taught about the pitfalls and potential of design. So it's really like cohesive and really supports her, her understanding of design and um, and again, shows us her opinion and like thought leadership. So it's just a great way to engage with her um, with her LinkedIn network. And again, you can also 
like, and you can also comment on posts to to um, to engage with um, to engage with members of your um, LinkedIn. And another way to be an active member within your network is to complete LinkedIn courses. LinkedIn LinkedIn Learning Courses offers more over six thousand courses with with industry leading professionals. Um, LinkedIn Learning does offer a free first month trial, so you can see if the platform works for you and see if there's any courses there that is of interest. Also, because of the pandemic right now, there are a lot of free courses that have been made available that I really think that a lot of people, especially yourselves, can take advantage of at this time. Um, for example, uh, Microsoft has created, you know, they created a learning pack path for technical courses around software development, financial anal um, analysis, and then even other soft skills courses as well. So I would definitely, you know, take advantage of the opportunity to see what courses are available for free. And then that way, you know, a lot of these courses are about, well, maybe like an hour long. And then once you complete the courses, you can earn badges and then add those skill and add those skills to your profile. And then in turn, of course, it shows your, shows your passion for learning and then gives you more credibility on a certain topic. Um, lastly, also in addition to that, if you complete a course, you can also connect with the professional who taught it. Um, you can easily shoot them a note stating that you watched their course and then maybe you can also even offer one takeaway that you got from it. Um, connecting with these professionals, um, it will give you it will give you access to free opportunities like courses and events to attend so there are there are a lot of perks to um, completing a lot of these LinkedIn learning courses so now that you've created your LinkedIn profile and you're trying to make a great first impression you're learning how to be an active member on LinkedIn now it's time to grow your online network now, the first, before you start liking and connecting and all that stuff, you want to make sure you're building a strong and relevant network. And in order to do this, you want to be clear about your professional direction. Think about why you're using LinkedIn. Are you looking for an internship? Are you just um, starting your undergrad career and maybe want to get an idea of companies out there or looking at different trends that are happening in the industry? Are you curious about what your professional path looks like? Or are you looking for volunteer opportunities? Um, you really want to make sure that you are clear about that profession, your professional direction. And what I mean by this is that sometimes if you're new to LinkedIn or you don't fully understand its use, you may start liking a lot of random organizations that have nothing to do with your professional interests. So you wanna be more intentional and focus on the quality of your profile and your network. And just make sure what you're doing is relevant to your interests professionally and your brand. So unlike a lot of the other social media platforms on LinkedIn, you wanna have a, you want to have more quality connections over quantity. Um, on LinkedIn, it's not about how many connections you have. You're, you're really honestly better off having good quality connections than connecting or liking everything you see on LinkedIn. So think about if it's not gonna get you closer to your professional goal, don't, don't connect with that person. Um, now, this isn't to say that you cannot connect with your peers or colleagues, family, friends, because sometimes your immediate network will help you find opportunities that you may have not necessarily found on your own. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to connect with your friends and your families. Um, def, um, but in terms of like other random connections that, you know, you don't think will probably have nothing to do with your career, it's best to just not connect with them. Um, to begin growing your, your network, you should start searching for topics, um, companies, organizations, former classmates, or faculty in your professional field, and then send them personalized connection requests. 
Um, if you don't know the person personally, um, this is where it becomes really important to have that one click um, great impression profile. Um, that person is more likely to accept your request if you come highly recommended, recommended and also send a note if you've engaged with the person before or read their posts. Maybe you've met them in person or you saw them speak. So if you're really interested in connecting with someone and you have no connection to them, maybe quickly read a post that they've that they posted and um, reference it in your in your note. And definitely don't be discouraged if someone doesn't accept your invitation to connect or if they don't respond to the message or doesn't ask a question about you in return. A lot of people on LinkedIn, they use it differently. Um, some people check it every day and others use it sporadically. Um, but if you don't hear back from someone, maybe just in the meantime, just let it go and um, work with the connections that you currently have. Um, okay. So another great way to grow your online network is to follow influencers in your industry. Um, by doing so, you're really able to stay up to date with a range of content that particular influencer would, sh um, would share. Um, it would show up on your feed. So for example, Bill Gates, um, maybe he shares an article or news about the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and is um, or what they're currently doing. So this in turn, you know, will give you the ability to share that information with your within your own network and then add value among your peers. Again, write a comment about, you know, why you find that um, article interesting. It just really gives context to your profile because it demonstrates your interests, um, passion in what you do or passion in what your the influencer that you follow does and even who you look up to. Um, secondly, follow companies you'd like to work with. Many companies uh, will create a company page on LinkedIn to represent themselves and build their online presence. So when you follow companies that you're interested in working with, you're really able to stay current with company news and any updates um, that they may have. Again, it will show up on your feed or you can even visit their profile. You'll able to, you'll be able to see who works there, see if there's any available available position listed on their websites, or overall, you know, just learn more about the company and what they do. Now, if you see someone you'd like to like connect with um, from that company, um, definitely send a personalized message to connect with them. Even if they're not the right person to speak with about a, a job opening, they can probably tell you who you should contact or maybe even put you directly in touch with that person. Another thing you can do is like you can actually request informational interviews with an employee at that company to either get a background, to get more background on their position, or if you have any further questions about certain projects the company's working on. This just really shows initiative and how you can separate yourself from other candidates. And if you eventually get an interview with one of those companies, with one of these companies, you'll you'll have you'll less you'll have less research to do. Um, ahead of the interview. And that's why it's just really important to be an active member on this platform and really start growing your network. It just, you know, it gives you, it gives you, um, it gives you a little bit of an edge when, once you start um, researching and connecting more. And lastly, join groups, um, join groups that are of professional interest to you. Um, and the reason why is because then that way you can connect with others who are in similar fields. Um, these can be university alumni groups, maybe clubs or associations, or any other specific um, industry specific groups. Uh, a lot of the times you'll be able to find people who you share common skills with, experiences or interests and goals. And it's just a great way, another great way to connect with people. Now to the left is just a quick snapshot of what this would look like on your profile. 
your interests will it it'll all be um it all be found in one place the influencers companies groups and schools you can easily follow you can either search for them or you can follow if you find if you're on another person's profile and you realize oh wow you know i really like gary vaynerchuk um i want to follow him see what's up or richard branson so it's just a good way to keep up to date so now that you've completed your profile, you're, you're, you're engaging, you're building your network, you can start to begin applying um, for, for jobs. Um, remember to read each description and attach a cover letter and a resume um, if it asks for this. I personally would always attach the resume and cover letter regardless, just because um, you, know, <laughs> you wanna be a little bit more proactive um, your your LinkedIn profile also may act as your resume if you have completed this in full. Um, I'll show you in the next slide how this would look like, just so you can have a better understanding of how to move throughout the website of how to select the jobs and search for internships. But I do want to highlight that um, you know LinkedIn has a feature called an open to work feature which allows you to add a section to your profile, letting recruiters know that you're searching for internships. Um, you can select the roles that you have in mind and maybe job locations. You'll also have the option to have this visible to all LinkedIn members or recruiters only. I would suggest if you're a student to set this visible to all LinkedIn members because there may be people in your network who would be willing to help you find an internship and it's just another great network to, it's just another great way to network within your LinkedIn community. So here again is a quick, quick screenshot of how to kind of use the job search on LinkedIn. First, you'll want to click on the jobs icon on the top, and then you can search internships, and then the location will be United States. And then here um, on the left hand, um, left hand side you can see that you know communication and events intern fall 2020 remote influencer marketing intern um, if you're not quite sure that you want to um, if you want to apply to that job you can always save the job but once you click on that um, job posting to the right it'll populate and show you all the information you need to know about that position and you can also click on BBC Studios or the, the company profile to learn a little bit more about the company. In addition to that, it also show you um, the job and like how many skills match, how many of your skills match the, the job description that they're looking for, and then um, how many applicants have applied for that. Here is the easy apply button, and that allows you to apply with your LinkedIn profile. Um, again, so, um, this, if you have a complete, well-rounded profile, um, the recruiters on LinkedIn can easily just quickly go on your profile, see, see, see everything that we've discussed, and you know, hopefully they reach out with um, an interview. And here is the other section that I previously mentioned about the open to work um, feature. Um, this, if you click on add profile section you are able to add um, add this feature to your profile by clicking on looking for a new job, show recruiters and others are open to work. Um, and then once you click on that, it'll sh a ring will show on your picture. It says hashtag open to work. So any recruiters um, who are looking for interns could potentially find you this way. Now, with that, we will conclude the presentation. Um, Abby, has any other questions come in? We do have two questions. Um, so the first one is, can my current employer see that I'm looking for other positions if I add looking to work to my profile? So if you include looking to work or seeking opportunities um, in your profile headline your current employer would definitely be able to see that but also i definitely just wouldn't recommend to ever put seeking opportunities or finding um 
or open to work in your headline because that is definitely prime real estate and would be better use for your brand statement. Instead, you can use the open to work feature that I just uh, that I just um, briefly mentioned in the last slide. Um, in theory, your employer wouldn't be able to see this option displayed if you choose to only show recruiters. Um, but there are there are some chances at times that your your employer could potentially um, see that you're open to work if you know they're signed in as a recruiter and whatnot. Okay, that's good to know. Um, the last question is, is there anything that I shouldn't, shouldn't post on my LinkedIn profile? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so again, your, your LinkedIn profile is, is not, it's a little different from other social media prof profiles in that it is, it is much more professional. So you definitely don't want to post complaints about your current or former boss, colleagues or company. You know, never post anything with any spelling mistakes. Also, don't publicize your job search by posting it onto your feed like, hi, I'm looking for a job. Um, it's, again, better off to maybe use the open to work feature. Um, also, anything unrelated to jobs itself is just better left off of LinkedIn. Um, such as, you know, like personal photos that might be just better to um, share privately on your Facebook or privately on your on your Instagram. Um, it is fine to get a little bit personal in your posts and maybe like occasionally lighthearted, um, but using your account, you know, maybe to like curate like funny cat videos probably isn't like the best use of LinkedIn. So it's really about really using your judgment and trying to stay as professional and polish on your LinkedIn profile more than anything. Is there any other questions? Nope, that was the last question. Awesome. So since there are no more questions, um, I'll go ahead and conclude this presentation. I really hope that this was useful for you and for building your online presence and for your internship or trainee job search. We will be sending a recording of this webinar to you and follow up with any other questions um, for, you know, if you're interested in obtaining more resources to help you prepare, search, and obtain internships. We do have a series of career guidance webinar on our YouTube channel, Career Training USA. And if you're interested in learning more about inter-exchange career trainings intern or trainee program, or if you already have an internship, please feel free to visit our website or reach out to my email and I'd be happy to help you with any of the questions you may have. Okay, well, thank you again for joining this webinar. Um, see you soon. <laughs>